Welcome to Walking in Biblical Manhood. We are in the face of so many voices in the world seeking to define manhood. We look to the Word of God to clarify what it means to walk as a man of God's own heart and to follow the ultimate example of Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you, brothers. This is Wade. Just doing a supplement here on the walking in biblical manhood. And um, first of all, I want to thank all of you who have supported this, have watched, have joined us. Uh, we've hit just about the 5,000 mark as far as uh, Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube for those um, that have tuned in and watched or listened to the testimony or to the episodes with Bob, Scott, and I. So thank you for all those of you who have joined us. Um, it's been an honor and a privilege. We pray you've been edified, encouraged, and strengthen in your faith. And just want to give you kind of a uh, update of what's going on. Uh, we are going to be now sending out the episode every other week. There's a lot of transition happening in the life of Bob and Scott and myself. And so in order to be able to do what we've done, and that is we've, we really want to prioritize us being together rather than doing it like through a Skype or um, some, you know, just feeding in from different locations. We really was a priority for us to be together when we do these recordings. So in order to do that, we're going to have to do it every other week, um, to be able to carry forth with what's all that's going on in each of our lives. And so there could be a supplement that I would do every once in a while between those different weeks, uh, just to encourage. And so our prayer is that you'll continue to, um, be able to be edified through these podcast. So thank you again for joining us in this. And uh, it's been an adventure and our heart and our prayer is to bless the brotherhood whom we love so much. Um, just another reminder for those who are interested, we're having our gathering September 27th and 28th here in Charlotte at Steel Creek Church of Charlotte. You're more than welcome to join us. We're excited about that time to seek the face of God and to press into his presence together and to go out two by two to bring the good news uh, to those around. So, in uh, just in kind of encapsulating this time of what I've just said, I just really want to come off of what the last week's podcast was concerning the discipline of silence and solitude. And I just can't stress this enough to encourage you brothers to get away, to shut off the noise, to, to shut off the internet, email, social media, and to get quiet before the Lord to hear from him. So, in regard to last week, let me just emphasize seven more points very quickly to encourage you in that. Number one, when you set that time aside, whether that's three hours for an afternoon or if you're able to get away for an entire day uh, or if, even for a weekend, which would be amazing. And uh, the longer we can tarry in his presence in that way, obviously, the better. And I, I would have to say this also, encourage your spouse to do that. I believe they're going to see the benefit of it. They're going to be blessed because of your being in the presence of God, and they'll be more apt and to encourage you to go back and, and to do it again um, as, as that door opens and as you uh, prioritize and schedule it as well. I would encourage at least once a month. I'm not talking about quiet time. I'm talking about more extended time um, to have that time. So let me just encourage you with these quick points. Number one, um, enter his gates with thanksgiving. When you do that, just take time to really count your blessings and name them one by one. Take time to really give thanks in what the Lord has done in your life and really come into that place. As the Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Second of all, I would encourage you to sing Psalm 100. Enter his presence with singing. Um, th there's, You've heard it from me. Others and others I know, there's a high priority in the scriptures concerning singing to the Lord. Um, over and over, like over 200 and sometimes we are commanded to sing, um, commanded to rejoice. This is very important that we enter his presence and give him the praise that he deserves. So come with even songs. And I'm going to say a lot of it is, all, is really in your preparation. Prepare. Take that time to say, even what am I going to bring? So that time is coming with great anticipation and, and expectation in that. Uh, number three, really focus on the cross. 
take the time to really meditate on the cross, the power of the blood, the significance of his sacrifice, the power of the resurrection, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Take extra time to just sit at the foot of the cross and meditate and worship and thank Jesus for the great sacrifice that he has made for you and the immensity of the significance of the cross and what it has done in rescuing you and myself from the darkness into his marvelous light, from the power of Satan, now in the kingdom of God. I'll take that time to really meditate on it. Just bring it back to that born again experience of when you first encountered him and worship, just as we see um, the woman do in Luke chapter 7. To whom much is uh, forgiven, the same loves much. And when we really meditate on the cross and the great chasm that he crossed for us, we recognize how much we've been forgiven and that love really begins to overflow first to him and then to others. Uh, I would also say uh, come prepared with what you're going to meditate on. Pray ahead of time what book of the Bible you're going to really dive into to, to uh, immerse yourself in, to meditate on. Come prepared in that way as well. Number five, of course, bring like a journal or something to write. The Lord is going to speak. He's going to speak through his word. He's going to speak as you wait upon him. Write it down. Don't be negligent in this and, you know, think, well, I'll remember. No, write it down so that you're uh, showing, of course, your heart. And that is to obey what he speaks to you and to have it implemented when you leave that place of quietness and um, that place of solitude. And then I would encourage you, number six, pray for your loved ones. Bring specific prayer requests. Believe God for specific things. Don't, don't just come like a, a laundry list, which is often sometimes what happens. Take time to really tarry and pray into certain prayer requests to believe that right then and there, in that time that you're away, they're going to be heard by the Father and they're going to be answered. So often we, we, we just come quickly through a prayer request. I want to encourage you, believe God that in that time, something is going to be answered and you're going to continue to pray until you feel a release in your spirit that it has been heard by the Father and He has answered. Amen? And then lastly, of course, I just want to say, summing up, come prepared with food, if you're going to fast, with, with liquids or whatever. Um, but just come already that there's no distractions. Everything is right there in that place and you're locked in with God. And in that, I would even encourage you to bring communion, um, to be able to come to the Lord's table. And again, focus on the cross and proclaim his death until he comes. Amen. Can't overemphasize that we talked about this, that this is a pattern we see first in our King and the author and the perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ by coming away alone with the Father, but we see it also with Moses, Elijah, David, on and on. It's very important that we lock ourselves in with God. I'm not talking about just your daily time. I'm talking about an extended time, a very specific time that you're intentionally coming to seek the face of the Father. I want to close with a couple of quotes, uh, some that you may have heard, but I pray they're an encouragement as we close on this topic. And um, Thank you again for all your support, those who have been with us in this Walking in Biblical Manhood podcast. Um, continue to pray. We're about to go into um, a new subject uh, this coming week. Um, and then we're going to begin after that, after the next five episodes, we're going to be hitting in the book of Proverbs, which I'm very excited about. I, I believe for Bob Scott and I, we're excited as we walk through that and to gain the wisdom of God that he's called us to have as his sons and to pass that on to the next generation. So I want to close with these two quotes. Andrew Murray, praying saint from South Africa, man of God, pastor, missionary. Um, he said, prayer is not monologue, but dialogue. God's voice in response to mine is its most essential part. Again, um, Billy Graham said the same thing. It's a dialogue. Come expecting to hear from God. I love this quote by Murray also. Oh, let the place of secret prayer become to me the most beloved spot on the earth. Again, saying to the Lord, you're my first love. It's you and I here together. I want to be with you. I want to hear from you. I want to pour out my heart to tell you how much I love you. And come with that and show him. Prioritize him. 
show him how much he means to you and watch him draw near to you as he promised as you draw near to him. Lastly, this quote by E.M. Bounds, the goal of prayer is the ear of God, a goal that can only be reached by patient and continued and continuous waiting upon him, pouring out our heart to him and permitting him to speak to us. Only by so doing can we expect to know him. And as we come to know him better, we shall spend more time in his presence and find that presence a constant and ever-increasing delight. And that is the truth. It, it will continue to increase and we come with that expectancy, but it takes patience. The Lord is not like our fast food culture and society. He is and, and deserves us to wait upon him, showing that we... Um, prioritize him in humility and um, in honor to him, not in being, him being treated um, like some kind of a genie in the sky or uh, some kind of a vending machine. But he is the eternal almighty God. He is our heavenly father through the blood of Christ. And he deserves um, our undevoted attention in that time. And thank be, thanks be to him for what he has done uh, for us through his son Jesus Christ and calling us to be his children and on top of that to be indwelt by the power of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the third person of the Godhead. Amen. Blessings on you all. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. May your time be rich, filled with um, his peace and joy, overflowing, vision released. Uh, insight counsel knowledge revelation given to you that you will never be the same again and may you encourage others to go and do likewise in the body of christ never before do we need to have this time locked in with god the days are dark and all the more that we should be abiding in him and his light shining through us amen god bless you all love you all in the name of jesus